Good morning. My name is Lori. Welcome to my channel. We are quilters. Today we start out on a new adventure. Applique quilting. Wait, 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 don't change the channel. I know that so that word is scary. I put off starting applique for way too long. It's not hard. It's just hand sewing. I put it off because, I, I, well, I don't know why I put it off. Well, maybe I do know. There's a lot of prep work involved in applique. It's nothing to be afraid of. And when I was younger, maybe I just didn't have the patience to do the prep work. But it's, it's not so bad. Once I learned how, it's not so bad. And I wish I had started earlier when my vision was better and I didn't need these lovely bad boys to see up close. And when I didn't have arthritis in my hands. But I have arthritis in my hands and I still do applique. I just take more breaks and work on smaller sections at a time. And I always have some other project going on on the machine at the same time. So today we are starting out on this adventure of applique. We will be doing machine applique and hand applique. And by my best calculations, I think there were 15 or 17. There were a bunch of different methods of applique. And some have their own special uses. And some, you'll just have to find the one that you like best because that is how I worked it. But I will show you all the different varieties that I know about or that are in resource books. So let's go. Let's get started with this adventure on in applique. Resources. I have lots of book resources. I picked five that were nice, thick, big resources and a couple extra pattern books. Here are some of the my pattern idea books. One is a calendar, but it is fantastic. Here's a resource book at Play With Applique. I love this one. And these ones, just every book has a different approach, but it's all kind of the same, same steps. Some are just more detailed than others. These are just good, basic books, if you happen to have one of these. This one is from 1978. I paid a dollar for it. Supplies. Don't let this overwhelm you. You don't need everything. Thread that matches your applique shape is always good. Or you can use a contrasting thread when you're doing machine applique. I love thread. Needles are an important part of applique. Hand needles, machine needles, using a good needle. We'll get into particular types of needles in a, on a different day. I need to do a very quick tribute to one of my grandmas, Grandma B. She, this is her machine. It does a nice zigzag stitch. I have newer machines that do this, but this machine is named Helen after her because it was her machine. If I'm doing machine applique, it is most likely the machine that I will be using. Optional stuff. Webs, interfacing, stabilizers, paper. Here's some light steam a seam. That's one of the fusible webs I use. Here's heat and bond light. They don't gum up your needle. This one is a non-woven interfacing that has fusible stuff on one side. And then we have freezer paper that you can cut into shapes and use. Here's a, this has been used once and can be used again. Then there is stabilizer for if you are doing machine applique, not only on the embroidery machine, but on a regular machine. And then fusible featherweight interfacing also helps. And here's some totally stable iron-on interfacing. Don't panic. You don't need to go shopping. You can do applique without all this stuff. Now for the gooey stuff. Sticky, gooey stuff. Glue sticks. I'm not a big glue fan. But regular school glue, it's washable. Fabric glue, it's washable. I have one that has a nice little spout. You put dots of glue, but I couldn't find it to show you. Then we have starch and starch. With this starch, I use Q-tips to control where the starch goes better. I'll explain that in a different episode. And then I have my West Virginia Quilters Moonshine made from vodka doesn't seem to attract pests as much as regular starch. 
I will add the recipe in the notes below. One year I gave this to my friends for Christmas. Template materials. There are lots of different things. This is a hot mess. It is a magazine binder and I have all kinds of pieces of recycled plastic. Plus I have some real quilters template plastic. It has a grid printed on it. Found these cute little applique shapes on a clearance rack at one point. I'm adding the freezer paper back in here because it is great for templates. Hot stuff. Let me talk a little bit about the iron. You need a nice hot iron. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. But if you use a wool mat, you need to protect your mat if you use starch. Patterns like recipes are just suggestions in my mind. So here is a calendar. It has patterns in the back. And there they are, some patterns to do like snowflake cutouts. Uh, this book has full-size patterns in it. And they have a little picture, and then they have fold-out pages. So there's half of the actual size applique. This one is Rows of Sharon blocks, the whole book. There's all of their patterns, all condensed onto one page for the flower parts. This one has many different components. They do the applique on pieced blocks or surrounded by pieced blocks. This book that was made in 1978 has the little grid that you have to enlarge it by hand. I love this one. It has seven template free ideas. Some other stuff you might want to use if you have it handy. No big deal. This doesn't look like much, but it is a light box in its little carry case. I will get it out on another day so we can use it. It is wonderful for these type of projects, especially the template free ones. A bright sunny window works just as well. In Michigan, I have a Franken light box. This is just a sheet of laminating film and it's a placement guide. These are bias press bars. I've used them one time. That was when I opened the package. So I have some exploring to do with these. See you on Wednesday for the economy block. One of my favorite fastest scrappy blocks. Mm -hmm.